So hi, I know it's been an extremely long amount of time since I uploaded my last YouTube video and the reason was that I was moving to the UK for my studies and I have been here for the last five months figuring out when I can get back posting, uploading videos. As you can see right now I'm in my room at university and for all those who don't know me, my name is Raj, I'm a student at the University of Manchester and I'm studying physics. So the reason that I got some time to make a video today was that I have finally finished my semester one. So my semester one is finished and if I were to describe it in one word, uh, academically, it was difficult. It was difficult. So I'm realizing right now that I had not made a video while I was coming to the UK, while I was moving and I had planned to do all of that, but college got in the way and it is extremely difficult. I underestimated how difficult it was going to be, but finding time to do stuff other than studying and other than socializing, I bet you do not get a lot of time to do the stuff like editing for YouTube, uploading on YouTube and all, all of that stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna first of all talk about moving to the UK well, first. So I came to the UK on the 7th of September, if I remember correctly. And I came to London before I came here to Manchester. The reason was that I had to quarantine for 10 days at the place where I arrived. So when I was in Atlanta, I quarantined at an Airbnb, you know, because of COVID. And that was a good experience because I got rid of the quarantine by about the seventh day. And I got about four to five days to just uh, roam around London. And this, uh, this being my first time in the UK, it was amazing and after spending some of some of those days there in London uh, on the 16th of September I came to Manchester via train and yes it was a surprise because I was expecting to see something similar to London when I came to Manchester but Manchester was very different and I'm gonna be completely honest the first time I came in Manchester I was a bit disappointed it did not look as good as London. The reason was that I hadn't been to the city centre yet. I just directly took an Uber from the rail railway station and came to my hall of residence. So I wasn't particularly impressed, but now that I've stayed for a long time here in Manchester, I can confidently say that I like it way more than I did, um, way more than I, li I like London. So yeah, talking about the campus, the campus of this university is extremely beautiful. The main building or the building that is the face of the university is from the 1800s and it looks extremely magnificent. It gives you some more of your Oxford vibes. Apart from those, there are buildings that are modern as well. Like for example, there's this building called the Allen Gilbert Learning Commons, which is like everyone's go to place for studying and therefore it's not a surprise that it's full most of the times apart from that the there's the new engineering building which is called the mecd for some reason the university spent about 400 million pounds on that building and that building is huge it is absolutely huge and the first Oh, in the first week I had a tutorial session over there, I'll talk about what tutorials are in a bit and I could not find the room that I was supposed to go to, I just spent half an hour just roaming around the building until I found it, so it is beautiful and it is huge. So now, talking about the academics, um, I, I had five classes, six if you're counting lab work, so I had five classes in total, those were dynamics, um, quantum physics and relativity, astrophysics, maths and microeconomics 1. Now first of all let me get microeconomics 1 out of the way. It was an optional course because you, uh, we had to choose one optional class and most of the students chose an optional class that was related to physics but I wanted to have a little bit of diversity at least in the first day of my classes. So I took up microeconomics just to see what it was like. But yeah, I wouldn't say that I have any any regrets at all by choosing, choosing microeconomics. It was a fun course uh, alongside all the main physics courses as well. So now let me talk about the other courses which are related to physics. The first one, dynamics, which was obviously 
stuff that I had done in high school during my 11th standard plus a lot. So 11, in 11th standard, I got a basic introduction of basically what I was going to do in the dynamics course that I did over here. The questions were difficult than most of the other courses, but it was, it was manageable because I was already introduced to most of the concepts in that. The next one is quantum physics and relativity. This course was completely new. There was nothing about it that I had done earlier and it was challenging. But a plus side to that course was uh, Brian Cox who was our lecturer for, this, well, for half of the semester, which is the reason why many people choose to come to Manchester because he is quite a famous personality, as you all know. The third course was introduction to astro and cosmology. Now, this course wasn't difficult to understand, if you know what I mean. It was easy to understand, but it had a lot of content to, you know, remember for the exams. Because we had like 120 pages of material, and which we went through in like 8 weeks. And there used to be, uh, the questions were asked from literally any corner of those, those 120 pages. So it was it was difficult, and for me personally, it was the toughest of the five exam of the four exams that I gave in this semester. And the last one was maths. Now I, would, I can confidently say that maths was the easiest of all of the courses that I did in the first semester, because it was again mostly stuff that I had already done in class eleventh and twelfth, almost all of it also some uh, some differential equations and some of those stuff some of that stuff was new but most of it again i had done and even if i hadn't done all of that stuff maths was still the easiest of those modules but yeah and it was fun at the same time coming to how a week regularly went at uni during the first semester now in the uk there's this thing called tutorials which run alongside your lectures so they used to be first they used to be lectures so for example if i had a lecture on 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 the morning of tuesday after the lecture they used to upload a upload a tutorial sheet or a problem sheet on the student system which we had to download and which we had to do on our own and submit it to our tutor so each tutor had about four or five students under her, him or her and we used to hand them uh, our sheets they used to collect it for us send it to us uh, via email uh, how we had done on the sheets but they didn't use to mark it so how much you get on the sheets doesn't actually count towards your final grade what counts is that if you had shown effort on doing the sheets and once you had submitted for example if the lecture was on tuesday you we used to have the tutorial session on on uh, on Thursday or Thursdays or Wednesdays where we used to discuss the questions and the answers to those. Now as I had four physics modules we, I, I had two tutorials to go with it. One tutorial uh, in one tutorial we did maths and astro and in the other tutorial we did dynamics and quantum. Now personally the favorite part of my week was the tutorials because in the lecture theaters, there are about 400 people sitting, so you do not get that kind of a personal attention that you want to. But in the tutorial sessions, uh, we have only four of us, so you can freely ask whatever questions you have, and you can discuss anything that is going on. And it is not just limited to your, you know, to your academic life. You can discuss about anything that you want to in your tutorials. Also, other than the tutorials, there is something called pass, which is a peer mentor scheme where the students from second or third years have a weekly session with us about seven or eight of us and where they clear our doubts again regarding anything academically or even outside the academic life and now talking about the assessment depending on the module the amount of marks that we used to get internally like from your tutorials or some online tests were was 10 to 20 percent so and and most of the other marks as you know were on the examination and yeah so right now i'm done with my exams um i finished my exams on the 28th of jan and today the date is 2nd feb and speaking about how 
the exams were. I would say that the style of giving the exams was very similar to what we have in India. Where you get a question paper, you get an answer sheet. You, uh, it, it is in a common area where everyone sits and you. There was, it was not open book, but one big plus side is that calculators aren't allowed, which I yet don't know why it's not being done in India. So that gives a lot of, uh, you know, that gives you a lot of free time during the exam. But unfortunately, I forgot my calculator during my man's exam, which was, whew, which is not ideal. But yeah, uh, the exams went well um, and they were as they're supposed to be difficult and yeah but not too bad and i wouldn't say they were too good but yeah today as i told you is the second of feb um i finished my semester and from the 7th feb semester two begins which i am really excited for and at the same time a little bit nervous about <laughs> so monday 7th of feb is when my exams start i'll be making i'll be trying to make videos as and when I get time now and I'm hoping to get back to my weekly uploads um, it is going to be a challenge considering the amount of work that is there in my course but I want to be consistent and I'll try to upload at least one video every week so I hope you've subscribed already please like the video as well and stay tuned for the next one thank you so much for watching Thank you.